If we were to look towards a black hole and watch someone falling towards it, we would see them getting closer and closer to the event horizon, and rather surprisingly, we would see them slowing down more and more, but we would never ever see them falling in. Let's look at a simple diagram that helps us understand exactly why this happens. Hello there, my name's Bart, and in this video we'll be looking at black holes and the unfortunate but imaginary people that have to fall into them in order for us to do our fun physics thought experiments. If you enjoyed this video then please hit the thumbs up button, subscribe and hit that bell button for more fun physics content. Let's get into it. Now I did mention at the start of the video that we'll be using a simple diagram to understand what happens when someone falls into the event horizon of a black hole. And this is the cool thing about relativity. The math is super complicated, but we can get a lot of physical intuition from fairly simple diagrams that we can draw on the back of an envelope. To begin with, let's imagine that we're out somewhere in empty space. We can take this empty space in front of us and assign it some coordinates. In this case, we'll say that our friends can move along this direction, which we'll call x. And we can make a graph that allows us to plot how they move in the x direction over time. So we can add this time axis t. Essentially, this graph is just a simple position time graph, showing how objects' positions change over time. For example, let's think about how we would plot the motion of a photon of light emitted from the origin at t is equal to zero, moving along the x direction. Well, we know that light moves at around 300 million meters per second. So in one second, it will have moved 300 million meters. In two seconds, 600 million meters, and so on. This is a really shallow line on our graph. So to see it more clearly, let's rescale our axes. We do this by multiplying the time axis with the speed of light c, because now the axes are scaled similarly and light moving to the right from the origin along our x direction can be plotted like this on our graph, a nice 45 degree line. And light moving left from the origin looks like this on our graph. And light moving right from the origin released some time later moves like this and light released from this x position at t is equal to zero looks like this, and so on. The reason we do this is because it's really useful to compare these two sections of the graph, this section and this section, as we'll see shortly. As an aside, physicists also like to play another trick where they choose units where the speed of light is just equal to one. In meters per second, it's 300 million meters per second, but we could easily choose another unit that gives us one for this value. So the graph simplifies to showing us just what we call x and t. Now, interestingly, this simple diagram can be used in a rather abstract way to understand what happens outside, around, and inside a black hole. Specifically, it turns out that we can treat this region of our graph as representing everything outside the event horizon of the black hole. This 45 degree dotted line represents the event horizon itself, which is the boundary beyond which not even light can escape the black hole. And this part here represents the inside of the black hole, beyond the event horizon. Now exactly why this is true deserves its own video. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see that. I'll also leave some useful links in the description if you're keen to understand without having to wait for me to make a video about it. But one thing we can do to maybe convince ourselves that this diagram really represents the outside and the inside of a black hole is to imagine objects on either side of the boundary and see what kind of signals they can send. The fastest moving signals that they can send are photons of light, which on our graph move this way if sent in the positive x direction, or this way if sent in the negative x direction. All other objects sent out would move more slowly, and therefore like this, or like this. Slower moving objects therefore on our graph look like lines with an angle steeper than 45 degrees. In any case, an object or observer on this side of the dotted line could send a signal that reaches either region of the graph but an object or observer on this side of the dotted line has no way of sending a signal outside the event horizon. Even light does not move fast enough to access the other region of the universe, which is outside the black hole's event horizon. So let's now say our friend Alice is outside the black hole. Imagine she follows this trajectory, which happens to be the one for an observer chilling stationary outside the black hole. Basically, from her perspective, the black hole stays the same distance away from her as time passes. And in our graph, on our xt coordinate system, she seems to move like this. 
her exact trajectory doesn't actually matter, as long as she remains outside the event horizon for all times, because that's what we need from her in this thought experiment. Let's also say that our other friend Bob starts at the same place from our perspective, but unfortunately he falls into the black hole. He follows a different world line to Alice, crossing through our dotted line straight into the event horizon and beyond. We know that he can no longer send signals to Alice, or anyone outside the horizon for that matter, once he crosses. But let's see what happens in the moments leading up to the crossing. When Bob was here, he could have sent out a light beam signal like this, and it would have got to Alice at this point in time for her. As Bob was here, his light beam would have arrived at Alice at this point in time. And we can see that even if Bob emits light signals at regular intervals from his perceived time, that it takes Alice longer and longer to get those signals from her perceived time. This means that she sees Bob slowing down, both in terms of how fast he's moving towards the black hole, and in terms of any of his body movements, heartbeat, and everything else that he's doing. And interestingly, any light signal that Bob releases as he's crossing the horizon will take an infinite amount of time to get to Alice. So she will never see him crossing the event horizon, even though from his own perspective, Bob has happily, or unhappily, crossed over into the isolated region that is inside the black hole. And we gleaned all of this just by looking at this rather simple diagram and making a few small assumptions about what each part of the diagram represents. As I mentioned earlier, the math behind all of this is fairly solid, and these are only assumptions for the sake of this video. Check out the links in the description if you want a deeper understanding of how it all works. So all in all, an observer outside the black hole will never see another falling into the black hole, unless they go in too. Thanks so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe and hit that bell button for more fun physics content. Huge thanks to everybody supporting me over on Patreon, I'll leave a link to that in the description if you'd like to support me there as well. Thank you once again for watching, and I will see you very soon.